Hello and welcome. My name is Angie Holden and I'm the blogger behind The Country Chic Cottage. So today we're going to talk about everyone's favorite sublimation topic, color correction. But this time I'm going to do it a little bit different. So I have a past video where I talked about color correction and ICC profiles. And I get so many comments on that video with people struggling with color and their sublimation printer. So what happens when you convert an Epson EcoTank printer? The printer itself is adjusted to inks that are for inkjet printing. And we are converting that to a sublimation printer with sublimation ink. And sometimes the sublimation ink does not print the colors the way you want them to because there is a difference in inks there. So with those converted printers, sometimes you have to do some color correction. Now, a simple way to do that is to go to your ink manufacturer, get a custom ICC profile for your printer, paper, that kind of combination, use that, print, it looks amazing. Sometimes that doesn't happen. Sometimes you can't find the ICC profile. You get it, it doesn't work, your colors still look horrible. You really don't understand the print settings, you don't understand how to fix it. I'm here to help today. Now we're gonna talk about manual color correction within your print settings today. And I am gonna use a PC for this entire video. I am assuming that the settings are similar on Mac, but I don't have one to show you. And I can't answer any questions about how you do this on a Mac. But either way, hopefully you'll watch this video, see how to do manual color correction, and experiment a bit with your colors. So first let's take a look at the print settings that I use and a way to make those manual color corrections and set a preset for your printer so that you never have to go through all these settings again. You pick the preset and you're done. So let's take a look. Let's look at various ways to print on a PC. So the first way would be is if you just opened an image. Most likely if you just open an image, it'll open in something like, in my case, photos. If I go to print from here, there's not a ton of options. So if you see a screen that looks like this and you go to more settings and you can't find the settings I'm talking about, you need to look for another program to open this in. To do that, you can right click and do open with and you'll find other programs you can open it with that are on your PC. Now they will be different than the ones I'm showing here, but a program that is on, I think just about every PC is paint and you can do all of these in Paint. I'm going to show you how to do this in both Word and Cricut Design Space because those are common programs that people use to print sublimation designs. To print using Word, we're going to do Insert, and then you'll choose Picture from this device. Then you'll find the image that you want to print and insert. This is what I like to do to make it a little bit easier on myself. I usually right-click the picture, do Wrap Text, and do in front of text. Then I grab the corner of the picture and you can resize it that way. Or if you want an exact size, we can type up here in the corner. Let's say I wanted it five inches by five inches. So now it's five inches by five inches and it's ready to print. So now we'll just click file and then print. Once you click file and print, you should see something like this. First of all, you wanna pick your sublimation printer and then we're gonna click printer properties. This is the screen you want to see when you print with your sublimation printer in order to get the settings we're gonna talk about. And we are gonna talk about how to save these settings. So the first thing I want you to do is change this to premium presentation paper matte. If you can't find this exact setting, another matte paper setting will be fine. Quality, we're gonna change that to high. This should always be color. Two-sided printing should be off. If you're using letter size paper, it should be eight and a half by 11 here. And then we're gonna to go to more options. We wanna make sure that high speed is not checked. So you do not wanna check mark in this box, a check mark in the mirror image box. And now we're gonna do some of that color correction. So we're gonna change this from automatic to custom. And we are gonna to go to advanced. From here, we're gonna click color controls. Now we want to set this to Adobe RGB and you wanna make sure the gamma is on 2.2. At this point, what you choose is completely up to you. I will leave a link to a blog post below where some suggested settings are. You can try those if you would like, or you can just play on your own because we will talk about experimenting with these. So we can change the brightness, the contrast, the saturation, and the density. And you can also change the color itself. The color itself is a little easier to change if you click slide bar here. And now you can move the colors up and down. 
cyan, magenta, and yellow to get more or less of those hues in your print. So this helps you dial in those colors without the need of an ICC profile. So if you feel like your printing is pretty good but you would like a little more red in your print or a little less red, you could use this slide bar to add or take away and then do a sample print. So I'm just going to pick randomly. So I'm just going to, I'm gonna go back to color circle and I'm just gonna up all of these and this is just, I'm just gonna randomly do this and I'm going to say, okay. So this is the way I want it. This is something I'm going to try. I'm gonna say, okay. So now I have all these settings the way I wanted them. So all the settings are here and here, just the way I wanted them. We can do add, remove, preset. And I can call this sublimation test one Angie. So you can name this whatever you would like and we can click save. So now if I close this, all I have to do to make sure all of my settings are just like I picked them is click sublimation test one Angie, click okay and click print. And from now on, when I go to print, all I have to do is make sure that this preset is picked if I like the results. So you would need to experiment with those color settings, get what you want, make yourself a preset, and then use that every time to print with your sublimation printer. The beauty of this is that you could make more than one preset. So you can make a preset that is heavy in red, call it heavy red, or you can make a preset that's you know, less yellow, call it less yellow. You could customize each of these to be exactly what you want for different types of sublimation printing. So maybe one color combination looks good on fabric and another on mugs. You can make two different ones with this method. So now we'll click OK and let's take a look in Cricut Design Space at how this will look. Within Cricut Design Space, you'll wanna upload your image and I've already uploaded that so I will pick my image and add to canvas. Then you would resize that to whatever you wanted it to be. And then you would need to make sure that a machine that handles print and cut is picked, which is Maker 3, Explore 3, Cricut Maker, or Cricut Explore Family, and click Make It. And then because we're mirroring within our settings, we do not need to mirror here. We'll just click Continue. And we're going to click Send to Printer. We're gonna pick our sublimation printer, turn off Bleed, click Use System Dialog, and click Print. Then this same screen pops up. So I would pick my sublimation printer and then I would go to preferences. Then we have this screen where my preset is already here. So you can make a new preset in this screen or I can click the preset that I've already made and click okay. So anywhere where you have this screen, you can make a preset. It does not have to be Microsoft Word. It can be any place that you have this screen which like I said at the beginning includes paint. In this case, Cricut Design Space, which is free. There's all kinds of free options out there to print your sublimation designs and make these presets. So I would just click OK, and then I would click Print to send that to my sublimation printer. And here we're gonna take a look at printing out of Photoshop. So we can do the same thing that we did before, but use Photoshop to do that. This is the color chart that I like to use. It's like a hex code color chart to do my experiments and it's from htmlcolorcodes.com. I will link to that in the description below. But let's say that I wanna print this for my experiment. We'll do file and then print. Then out of Photoshop, if I wanna use those manual color corrections, I would do, make sure this says printer manages colors, go to print settings, and I would pick that preset or make a new preset just like we did before, click OK and then click print. And it would print with those manual color settings. I do have another video all about ICC profiles and using those in Photoshop. And that's where you would use Photoshop manages colors and I will link to that video below. Then the first time you actually use this in your printer, you'll add paper and it'll tell you what the paper settings are on the screen. Mine says plain paper and I wanna change that to the matte paper setting. So instead of clicking confirm, I'm gonna go down and click change and say okay. First option after I click change is paper size and I wanna leave that at letter, so I'll click okay. The next option is paper type. And I can just scroll through until I find that premium presentation mat. Once I find premium mat, 
I'm gonna click OK. Then it tells me what it will be changed to and I press OK again. Now my settings on my printer have been changed as well as the settings on my computer. So you can do this when you put the paper into your printer or when you go to print. And now I'm gonna print a color chart with a variety of profiles and kind of show you what adjustments are possible and how to test. Remember, testing is not just printing it on paper. I have a cloth here, it's polyester. Preheat your cloth, make sure you get all the moisture out, lint roll it well, then press the color chart that you print to a 100% polyester cloth. That way you can tell what your colors will be like when you press them. What you print is not necessarily what you will get once you press. So always remember that, grab some 100% polyester cloth and start sublimating those color charts to see what a difference it can make. So let's take a closer look at this chart. Let's take a look at some example colors that I printed. Now, when you print, you want to press to 100% polyester to do your tests. So this is just a sheet of fabric that's 100% polyester, and I pressed all of my tests to it to get a true look at what the color is. This middle one is just with my printer. No color correction at all. The bottom is with my custom ICC profile from Hippo. And the top is when I played around with those manual settings a bit to see what would happen. So let's take a look at the differences. So this middle one, just with my printer, I don't get a lot of reds. So my reds look very orange. Going across, the other colors look pretty good. When I get right in here, everything is not very bright and these grays are really dull. When I look at the ICC profile I have from Hippo, everything's really bright, but I am still kind of losing reds. So my reds are very pink. Everything else looks pretty good in comparison. My dark colors aren't very deep, but they are very bright. Now with this one, I turned like the brightness way up and just played with some different things, trying to get something I liked. And what happened was, if you'll notice this top row is really light colors, I lost those on this top profile. So you can definitely see the colors changed between the two. I love the yellows in this case. In comparison with the yellows that are coming out of my printer, these are way brighter, which I liked. I feel like my reds looked a little bit better than the original. And some of my deeper colors in here looked better with this version. However, I'm not happy with losing the light colors in the majority of the cases. So this combination might work if I had a really deep print that I wanted to sublimate, but if I had something with any light colors, I might lose those. So this is what you're gonna need to do to dial in your manual color correction. Print it as is, and then slowly make changes until you get something you're happy with. Again, you might find different presets work for different types of sublimation, but this is a great way to dial in those colors manually when you can't find an ICC profile that works or an ICC profile that you like. Then once you dial it in, because this is a hex color code chart, you can find the hex number and you could change the colors in something like Photoshop on a wide variety of prints. However, for photos, you just wanna dial it in as close as you could and use that preset for all your photo sublimation. So that's why I think manually, you may have different presets for different types of sublimation. So now you have a way to manually correct your colors and hopefully dial those in a little bit to what you prefer for sublimation. It will take some trial and error, I'm not gonna lie. This is not a perfect process. I can't tell you exactly what to set your printer at. I do have a friend over at That's What She Said. She created a custom preset that she loves so I am going to drop a link in the description below to her blog post. You can scroll down, you can see what values she used in her preset. Feel free to try it. Feel free to try your own. Feel free to just move those sliders a little bit, see what happens. I think you're really gonna love this once you find a preset that works for you and your particular printer. And I don't think everyone's printer is gonna be the same. So it doesn't matter, maybe you have the exact same printer I do, but yours doesn't work the same way mine does. That happens. So just because my printer works great, like the Hippo profile works pretty good for me, it doesn't for everyone. 
manual color correction, certain settings might work for one person. This, a person with the same printer, it may not work the same. So you really have to adjust those just for your printer and your situation. But I think you will find that through manual color correction, you can get a color profile that you love. So I hope this helps. If you have any questions about correcting colors with your sublimation printer, drop them down in the comment section, ask away. If you like this video, if it helped you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, head on over to our YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button. We have videos just like this one every single week and trust me, you don't wanna miss any of those. So thank you all so much for joining me and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.